Forget unicorn as a startup. Be a camel. Let's start with why. If I am a business owner, why do I need to care about sustainability? So the angle that's changed the last couple of years is that they're not only looking at economical resilience of the company, but I think a lot of people. Deal with sustainability as a risk management, while it should be a combination of risk management and creating, creating social value. If you're going to work on sustainability, don't think of this as a cost. So the first step in anything is actually the intention to do it. Hello and welcome to uh, the success. Business podcast. Uh, I'm Quoc Khan, your host. Uh, this is a sub series called Greenovate. Uh, we're going to talk about green economy innovations and the topic of sustainability. This is a initiative, uh, a collaboration between the Success and Nord Cham, uh, Nordic Chambers of Commerce in Vietnam. So thank you, Nord Cham, for this opportunity. We're gonna hear from corporate leaders, uh, industry pioneers, activists, many guest speakers on their latest insight into the topic of sustainable development. And our guest today is someone who has a decade of experience in CSR, sustainability, and social impact practices. She has advised many companies on sustainability know-how. And building connections between different sectors, from big corporates to SMEs to nonprofits, etc. And she is now a sustainability strategist and advisor at three different companies and organizations. First is Purple Ivy, a Swedish consultancy firm on sustainability. The second is AVPN. The biggest social impact network in Asia, and she is also running a blog platform called Sustainable Vietnam. So please join me to welcome Miss Christina Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and what an introduction! <laughs> you make me really sound like an expert. <laughs> you are an expert. Thank you so much yeah. for doing this. Thank you. Appreciate it. I guess for now, the topic of sustainability. Is getting more popular here in the business community in Vietnam, and uh, I don't think we need to talk about the what again. Let's talk about why and how. Let's start with why. If I am a business owner, if I am a SME owner, because SME is accounting for ninety percent of Vietnamese um, the Vietnam's economy. Why do I need to care about sustainability? Why should I? Prioritize this concept from day one. Well, thank you so much for the question. I think I'll backtrack with one definition, or maybe two, um, one or two definitions, and that is the definition of sustainability. So, if you talk about sustainability, is actually um, what are you doing with the needs of the day that doesn't impact the needs of tomorrow? Mm. And then, as we're talking about business, what is corporate sustainability? And corporate sustainability is how do you create a value, not only economically but also for people and planet. So I think that's a really good starting point. And we're talking about business, but today we're talking about SMEs, and that is a little bit, let's say, there are of course challenges and opportunities around sustainability. But why? Why should SMEs engage in sustainability? Well, many points, but I'm going to focus on three. Yeah. So the first one is, as a business owner, when you run your business, do you want to run it by choice or leave it at chance? And I think most business owners, whatever size they come from, they want to run it by by choice. And by choice meaning they want to decide how they direct their company. And if you want to run it by choice. Then it is so that sustainability will be one of the key aspects. It's not going away, mm -hmm. and why is it not going away? It's in the forefront, and especially here in Vietnam. If we talk about the environment, Vietnam is one of the countries most adverse to environmental impacts. Mm -hmm. So there's no getting away. It's going to be out, out in your front door. We see that with flooding every season. We're going to have. 
different stakeholders asking for it. So stakeholders can be consumers, to business partners, to even uh, regulations or regulatories. So for example, a business partner might choose you because you have a stronger sustainability engagement than another SME. Um, regulations, there might not be regulations on certain things here in Vietnam, but your business partner is following a regulation in the EU and that will impact their decision. Mm. So those are two, th those are one thing. So yeah. uh, ch choice or chance. The second one, which is also very popular right now is investors. Mm. So we talk a lot about uh, sustainability and the word ESG. ESG, the word actually is very driven by Uh, investors in which they use ESG metrics mm. to uh, determine you as a business if you're sustainable. So it used to be investors would look at, okay, I'm looking at this business. Uh, are they going to give the returns I'm expecting if I loan them or invest them money? True. So the angle that's changed in the last couple of years is that they're not only looking at economical resilience mm. of the company, they also want to ensure the business is resilient to impacts from environmental or social uh, uh, impacts. So climate change, uh, issues on social issues, etc. Mm. So investors want you, even an SME, to be resilient with ESG metrics and ESG impacts. Yep. Then the third part I want to highlight in your question is that As a startup and an SME, you actually have the best opportunity ever to actually integrate sustainability from the beginning. Mm. It's always so much harder if you decide, oh, down the line, oh my goodness, I'm going to work so and add it on. Start right from day one, yes. easier. So much easier. So when you're planning your business, um, you're planning, okay, what are our products, our services, how I'm going to how many employees I'm going to have, what's my cash flow, uh, what's my marketing, what's my communications, you can just add sustainability into it as well. Mm. And it becomes integrated from, the, from day one versus it being an add-on down the line. So yeah. I think these are three points that are val very important for startups and SMEs. So choice or by chance, what kind of business owner do you want to be? Two, investors they're demanding it mm -hmm. and three wouldn't it be better to integrate it from the beginning than have that extra cost to have to do it uh, later down yeah. the line it's very clear why should we do it and now we get into how execution how to do it from your observation what seem to be the biggest challenges for smes when they start executing this concept the actions You know, this is a question I actually looked into <laughs> and I actually asked someone yesterday yeah. at the uh, Nordic monthly get together for its members. And I uh, was talking to Mr. Long. He is an entrepreneur, has uh, done many businesses and startups. And I was actually curious if what I thought was still correct. Okay. Uh, and I asked him the question. Uh -huh. First of all, his response when I introduced myself to him Uh, when I said, what do you do? You know, you're at a networking event. Like, what do you do? And he was telling me he's an entrepreneur and he runs his business and done multiple businesses along his career. And then I mentioned that I was working in sustainability. And his reaction was like, oh, oh. that's a really popular topic, <laughs> but really difficult yes. here in Vietnam. Why? So very interesting. Then I stole your question and I actually asked him, what are your barriers or challenges when engaging on sustainability as a startup mm -hmm. or SME. Yep. And his response to two things he came up with straight away was one, financial, two, knowledge. So I'm like, okay, can you expand a little bit because mm. I'm going to use this for my talk <laughs> <laughs> with Mr. Kwok I'm right. going to use it and I need the info. Okay. Uh, so Mr. Long was very kind to expand on it. And uh, on financial, he said, you know, as a startup or an SME, our big focus is always survival. Yep. And we have a mindset that sustainability is still something fancy. It's something fancy that we can't do at the beginning. And as a startup, you're not really, um, you, you can't do fancy things, is what he's saying. Yep. So on the second point, on knowledge, he 
agrees and really underscores, I think many people see sustainability and they're like, oh my goodness, what is this? And I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And by not understanding, they don't want to do anything about it. Yeah. So, so interesting to hear from him. Lovely conversation, such great insights. And he absolutely agreed that sustainability is important. Mm -hmm. He's just also finding the challenges with financial and knowledge. Now, second part of your question uh, on regards, well, what do you do if you're an SME or a startup? And I would talk through three processes, which in a way I have also advised bigger companies on, but I think it's still relevant for all types of business. So the first thing, one, know your landscape, you mm. know, understand what's going on, do your research. Mm. And if you're going to have sustainability, understand what sustainability areas are relevant for you. Yeah. Remember, each business is different. So what impacts one business might not impact another business. Sure. One business in Vietnam, north of Vietnam, might have other landscape issues versus south of Vietnam. Yeah. So know your business, know what impacts you're going to have out to the environment or social, but also understand the landscape so that you know how it will impact the growth of your business. So do that research, understand. The second part, when you have understood those impact, set your goals and your vision mm. around it. So it's part of your business. And your goals, I think is really important that as a startup in SME, you don't have to set like 20 million goals, mm. you know, narrow it down to what is most important for you mm -hmm. so that it's manageable, but then create a roadmap that uh, allows for those other um, key goals and visions to come along along the way. Mm. So set your set your vision, set your goal, and the third uh, part is act and implement. Yeah. So put in the processes in place. Make the intention known to your employees, your stakeholders. This is what we're going to work on, and in including many other areas. But mm -hmm. set your intention. Put the processes in. Have your communication in place. Uh, and make it uh, something that you do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis as, as a business. Yeah. And then, then it doesn't stop there. I've just given mm. you three. And then sometimes you have to start over again to look at it. Because like in business, nothing is, um, nothing is the same every time. It's always movement, movement, movement forwards. And sustainability is the same thing. Movement, movement forwards. Sometimes it changes. And sometimes... Um, Sometimes it stays the same for a shorter period, short yeah. or longer period of time. Yeah. In the same way you make an investment on communications, HR, uh, infrastructure, include sustainability, and that turns the cost to an investment. So if we don't have money from investor, how could SME could solve the money problem? Yeah, I want to yeah. elaborate on that a little bit. You were mentioning about investor perspective when they look at the companies. Yeah. Uh, you know, three words, ESG, mm -hmm. environment, social, or society, and governance. So if you break it down into three pillars like that, what kind of steps that SME need to do to start, you know, executing that three pillars? Gosh, that's a very big question. I yeah. think, you know, everyone, um, yeah. everyone from all sizes is like, how do we work on these? So uh, if we go back to the definition of sustainability, corporate mm. sustainability is creating value on uh, economically, but also on people and planet. Mm. And sustainability is one word with three pillars underneath, as you say, environmental pillar, social pillar, and governance pillar. pillar. There are different models out there on how, uh, businesses have worked with sustainability, whether they uh, work with only one pillar, E mm -hmm. or S or yes. G, um, if they take that as a starting point. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing to think about is one, set the intention, we're going to work on this, you know, to understand the environment, do your research mm -hmm. and understand what's relevant to you as a business. Mm. You know, if you work in um, construction, what is relevant for you? If you're a okay. startup, uh, in the Mekong Delta, uh, working uh, at building up your shrimp farm, mm -hmm. for example, what's going to impact you? Mm -hmm. um, and then if you have a business here in the city, for example, Ho Chi Minh City, 
what's those impacts here? So, you know, everything is different. The models are different. The way to do it is similar, but the ownership is different. Um, so the process of integrating it into your business is setting the intention, doing your research, and making sure you execute and implement it. Three pillars, ESG. Do we need to work on those pillars at the same time, three of them at the same time, or we can just pick one to get started? Okay, so this is a, a question um, that sustainability, it's not, it's not so that you work on one and it doesn't impact the other. So I think that's important to clarify. Mm. So for example, if you work on environment issues, it doesn't mean it doesn't impact people, which is under the social banner. Mm. And um, if you work on environment and don't deal with processes, code of conduct, ethical behavior, mm -hmm. that's also. So yes, you don't have to work on everything at the same time, yep. but you have to acknowledge that they're all interconnected. Yep. Yeah. Let me get into a more specific one. You mentioned about uh, your conversation with uh, Mr. An, entre Mr. Lam, yeah. an entrepreneur and number one he mentioned is money. Yes. Funding, money. Yeah. Um, I just want to learn from, from, from all the examples from Nordic countries when companies have to deal with money problem in terms of doing sustainability and they need some money to do it and how to... to you know, solve the problem of uh, cap finance financing gap or capital funding gap when they still in survival mode. Most of the you know SMEs we are in survival mode, but we still want to invest into sustainability. What are some of the lessons we can learn from? I think let's start with that. Most investors won't just invest in sustainability; they're investing in the whole package of the business. Um, so. Uh, there might be specific investors that uh, invest in impact. For example, impact investors, they only invest in companies that uh, work towards impact plus have a return on investment. But if we do a general view on investors and, mm -hmm. and uh, they often invest in corporates that are holistic. So mm -hmm. it's the holistic approach. They want to invest in a company that has both the economic returns but also understands that they have put together a, a strong sustainability agenda in terms of a roadmap to meet uh, ESG, for example. Mm. So what they want really to put simply, investors are looking for businesses that are going to be around. Okay. They are looking for business that are uh, resilient to any shocks out there. And, um, they're looking at businesses that have planned and future-proofed their businesses for such impacts. So if we don't have money from investor, how, how could SME could solve the money problem? Okay, we're really focused on the money question yeah. here. Okay, yeah. um, the money problem. The money problem. So if we go back to what I said earlier, yeah. I think the biggest thing is if you're going to work on sustainability, don't think of this as a cost. You know, most startups and SMEs think uh, sustainability is a cost. But as you're starting up your business, you're still going to make an investment in yourself and in your business. So in the same way you make an investment on communications, HR, uh, infrastructure, include sustainability. And that turns the cost to an investment. Okay. Yeah. So you can also invest in yourself. You sure. don't need to wait for someone else to invest in you. Mm -hmm. In terms of communication, you just mentioned, so how do companies communicate their social value creation strategy to their stakeholders, including customers, employees, and investors? Let's start off by let's not uh, greenwash, ESG wash, or pretend that we're doing something that we're mm. not doing. So let's start with that. And I think a lot of people jump the gun and communicate something they don't have. So let's go back to the process first. Make sure you are doing something around sustainability before you communicate it. And I think the biggest, my most favorite is storytelling. People want to be engaged around the story of how you engage on sustainability. When it comes to engagement of stakeholders, which is one of my expertise and I love to do, mm -hmm. is that people want to see themselves in 
that engagement. Okay. They don't want to be something, oh, leadership said we should do it, but mm-hmm. how does it fit to the day to day? How can I engage my employees, my community around these sustainability topics? And that strengthens both ways the communication and the engagement. Yep. So when applying uh, the execution process of this sustainability journey, what kind of risk management that we need to take into consideration? The correlation between creating social values and the risk management. Okay. So talking about creating social value and the other side of risk management, I think we can look in the words itself. One is creation and one is management. So where do you want to be? What's the most exciting word? So when you, call, when you talk about creating value or creating social value, you're actually building a plan of roadmap with a long-term thinking. You're being proactive mm-hmm. on how you're going to create value around social, environmental, or governance issues in the long term. I think when you talk risk management, you're really like all about let's how we're going to work at putting fires out all the time. And you're looking at it as a checklist. Oh, we're okay. We're okay. But you're not really proactive in the long term of how we're going to be down the line. So it becomes a little bit more reactive. It is so, it is so that both go hand in hand. But I think a lot of people deal with sustainability as a risk management, while it should be a combination of risk management and creating, creating social value. But if I turn the question around back to you, what would you prefer? Would it, it, what's the more positive um, word? Is the creating or managing? Mm, creating. Yeah, creating sounds more exciting, yeah. right? So let's create and do something with social value or creating value around social, social issues, environmental issues that has that positive impact long term. So how, how can SME, small company, could they usually have limited resources. So how can they leverage the support from other business partners in terms of creating uh, social values and get ahead of the sustainability journey? Yes, I think that's a very important because a lot of this is all about collaboration and connections. And you don't, as a business owner, you don't work in silo. The way your growth goes is also how you work with business partners. I think in many ways, other business partners are looking to uh, support and help move those that are have a focus on sustainability as their gambit as well, move them forward. So I think the first thing to always do is ask. You know, if ask, you don't ask, ask for help, ask, ask for support or ask for knowledge. Uh, ask, oh, do you know, ask for information. I think the biggest thing that people are scared of and even business owners is just ask and get that knowledge. And, you know, one after another, you will see that other partners, different formats of partners will come and assist towards your journey. And it doesn't have to be specifically sustainability related. It can be on many other other, uh, fronts as well. How do you make sustainability accessible and simplified? Because I think the word sustainability is just so big sometimes. Forget unicorn as a startup, be a camel. Do you think it's more like a mindset problem or like an action problem? It's, sometimes it's easy for companies, leaders, when talk about talking about sustainability and they pop up things such as environment climate change, um, renewable energy, decarbonization. Um, Does that mean it's easy for them to underestimate the other two pillars, such as social and governance? Because environment is something that's very easy to see on the surface. Mm. It's true, and we go back to metrics. Sometimes environment is an easier metric to measure versus social when it comes to people, Uh, um, and sometimes even with governance as well. Uh, it's all interconnected. Um, so ESG is, well, although it's one separate letter, they're all interconnected. So as a business, you might be really good at one. I I, I had this example with one of your colleagues uh, before, but it's not a Vietnamese example. So okay. I'll, I'll throw it in anyway. Yeah. So um, we were talking that um, um, about uh, Elon Musk. Um, so last year, 
his company Tesla had fallen in sustainability ratings. Mm. And he was absolutely outraged about it because he was like, my project is one of the leading products contributing to a positive impact on the environment. But what was uh, the issue was that when you're looking at uh, the sustainability of a company, you're not only looking at one pillar, not E. Mm. What he had somewhat not failed in, but he had lowered in rank and as was his engagement on social and, and governance uh, in many ways. So social internally, how he uh, was treating his employees or how the workforce, uh, the, the, the well-being of the workforce and governance the way he was running his company. So as he was lower on those points, even if he was really good at environment, his overall sustainability uh, sustainability umbrella was actually lowered. Well, thank you. I want to I want to talk about the investing landscape right now because there's many more investors coming to Vietnam and looking at you know startups. Um, so sustainability is something that startup could connect and integrate into the model in order to look more attractive to investors. I think that's a great question. And let me start with um, a sentence I saw over this article that I recently read. And it said, um, forget unicorn as a startup, be a camel. And mm. very, very odd sentence to actually bring in a sustainability discussion. But let, if you give me a couple of seconds yeah. to explain. So a unicorn is a startup that um, is valued at 1 billion USD. I hope I said it correctly. Mm -hmm. And one they, billion. yeah, 1 billion USD. And their trajectory is growth. That is growth, growth, growth. And then a camel startup, and it's so odd to have that animal come into a sustainability conversation, but a camel is a startup that uh, works at on sustainability and survival balanced with growth and cash flow. Mm. Um, but if you look at these animals, and why would it be more interesting for investors to invest in a camel versus a unicorn? Well, a camel uh, is a quite a resilient animal. Uh, it uh, lives in some of the harshest places, very good to adverse effects. Um, it's quite steady, it's resilient uh, and, and quite strong. And at times can do spurts in terms of sprinting across the desert. So reliable uh, and uh, reliable and robust in the harshest conditions with spurts of sprinting. And then we look at the unicorn and the unicorn, it's an Im imaginary animal. It's not real. Mm. So if you look at the investor, they want to look at someone that's there for the long term, whether it's in uh, adverse, uh, adverse impacts and as Vietnam in itself is one of those regions most hard hit with climate change, even investors coming out and excited about the Vietnam landscape because it is vibrant and exciting. And it's one of those golden childs of, uh, of a country around in Asia where investment is still booming and the market is very interesting. But even as they look in and try to uh, invest in startups of SMEs, we focus on the environment. They want to make sure that uh, you're ready to meet the climate change that will impact Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Two, on the social side, that your workforce is a strong workforce, mm -hmm. you know. And three, on governance, that you have ethics and code of conduct and there's no corruption. So these are things that they're looking for things to be in place. And um, my question back, because we're talking about unicorns and camel, to wrap up, is there any other animal one can use that is so resilient or we skip that? I guess it's the buffalo here. Oh, Vietnam, the buffalo. In yes. Vietnam. That's just a symbol of, of, of Vietnam. Sometimes it yeah. becomes a symbol. Yeah. So we turn ar around and we say, <laughs> uh, forget the unicorn, startups should be buffaloes. Yeah, it should yeah. be puff, buffalo. And uh, you mentioned earlier when we had an early conversation, you said that um, sometimes sustainability is not a big word. It's already there in the business strategy. You try to build a good business. Uh, everything is right there. You just don't know. Can you elaborate on it, on it a little bit? Yeah, we had a really lovely yeah. conversation just catching up before uh, this recording. And one of the things we were talking about is how do you 
make sustainability accessible and simplified because I think the word sustainability is just so big sometimes. And then we throw in the word ESG and then measurement and metrics. And then (laughs) right now, everywhere you hear sustainability in all the media and everything like that. So it is quite overwhelming. Mm -hmm. One of your colleagues did mention it It as well. It is so overwhelming. Where do I, and the question before, where do you start or how do I learn about it? How do I decipher? If we go back and try to simplify it, a sustainable business wants to be around. A good business, yeah. yeah, a good business wants to be a lasting business. Mm. And if you're just simply a really good business, that means you run your business well. Uh, you are a good business. You treat people well, whether it's within the walls of your company or in the community around you. Um, You ensure that you have processes uh, that work Mm -hmm. and that uh, you have a code of behavior that is good and you have a good reputation. I think as a business owner, you can... We all want that. We all want that, Exactly. So in actual fact, sustainability or sustainable business is actually running your company a good way. In terms of money and knowledge, do you think it's more like a mindset problem or like an action problem when getting to sustainability oh gosh you are really giving me tough questions i really have to think (laughs) about them today i uh if i took take it in the vietnam context you know and i look at uh and i talk to people uh all the time you can ask uh i always have conversations with people (laughs) the interesting thing about mindset and knowledge i think it's a combination of two but you also have to look at Um, the generation uh, challenges here. So those that are a little older, uh, my age and above, (laughs) um, but a little older, you know, they have a mindset of growth. Let's succeed and grow. Yeah. And that knowledge of sustainability was never a priority Mm -hmm. because it was all about survival, survival, growth, growth, growth. And then if you look at the generation that is younger, And they are all and living the impact right now. And they're so much more interested, yes, in developing growth, um, but with sustainability in it. Mm. So the youth of Vietnam want to be educated around sustainability. They want to engage in businesses with sustainability. And funny enough, many of the entrepreneurs coming out from this generation have a lot of sustainability in their business model. And that's going to be the change of tomorrow, the shift of tomorrow, because these are, all of them are coming up. They are going to be the entrepreneurs, the small and medium, um, small and medium sized businesses, but also eventually be the big companies of Vietnam. Yeah. And that's going to be the really exciting. The challenge is we all want this to be faster and it's okay to acknowledge that sometimes Mindsets and knowledge and generational opinions don't match up, but there's still an excitement going on that youth here in Vietnam as well are interested to pursue sustainability in the way they work and do business. So are you saying somehow we have to sacrifice growth in order to achieve sustainable development? Okay, that is another question (laughs) that I actually find very interesting. That's why I always say integrate sustainability into your business. If it becomes something like an add-on to the side, yes, it feels like an add-on. It feels like a cost. But if it's part of your day-to-day way of doing business, it doesn't become something that is like, oh, we have to focus on growth or we have to focus uh, on sustainability or we have to focus on communication. Mm -hmm. It's actually the full package. You're focusing on all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say even as a startup or SME, integrate sustainability from the get-go so it's part of your business from day one instead of having it uh, on the side. Yeah, Uh, I guess in the... You know, big, big companies in Vietnam and especially the family business, uh, you mentioned the older generation and the younger generation mm. sometimes have a clash yeah. because they're different in mindset yeah. in terms of sustainability. And You tell me more about that. Yeah, uh, yeah. You hear the about it. more and more yeah. younger generation, they care more about, you know, sustainable topics, sustainability topics. And as a consumer's 
sometimes they demanding more from from companies from businesses and that could create pressure for the companies to do this mm. as well right mm. demand from consumers so i know it's kind of hard to have a like a solution because uh, each company is different but anything you know foundation solutions anything to start with universal uh, recipe or formula to to answer the, the questions I usually have this word that I say, and it's called intention. Intention. Let's have, go back to intention. Yeah. So the first step in anything, whether it's sustainability or if you're going to change your life or etc., is actually the intention to do it. So that's the first action. Everything else will fall into place, but you need to have that intentionality that you're going to integrate sustainability in your business, and that you're going to build a roadmap, have a vision and a goal. Mm -hmm. And you're going to take action and execute it, and that's really it—the intention to engage on sustainability. Going back to intention mindset. Uh, well, thank you so much for your sharing. Thank you so yeah. much for the questions. Thank you so much, and um, good luck with uh, all the upcoming projects. Thank you. So, I guess um, one key message that I uh, take from Christina answer is where to begin. With this journey, a long journey on sustainability for the businesses, especially SMEs, we can all start with a good intention, and then it would come along with appropriate actions. So start with your intention, um, changing your mindset. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Uh, please support us by subscribing to this channel, the Success, to uh, listen to more upcoming episode. And follow us on the different podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts for more upcoming stories. Thank you, and see you next time. Thank you, Nocham, for this opportunity. Thank you. Mm -hmm.